MC Lobshier, the host of the Cash Ninja podcast, and also the president and chief wealth and investment strategist of Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate cash flow banking, also known as infinite banking, with their business and investments. If you're interested in learning more about how we create strategies that integrate cash flow banking and investments to turbocharge them, you can access a video series at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Welcome to the Cash Flow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Here is your host inside the dojo, MC Laubscher. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Laubscher here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today, and in today's show, we're going to look at land investing cash flow. My guest in this episode is Seth Williams. Seth is an experienced land investor and residential income property owner with nearly a decade of experience in the commercial banking industry. He is the founder of RE Tipster, a real estate investing blog that offers real-world guidance for part-time real estate investors. Are you an investor looking for passive cash flow but don't have the time to explore your options? Discover Real Estate. It's the best option for passive income that savvy investors have been turning to for years to generate income and build wealth. But the reality is real estate investing takes expertise, market knowledge, and time. So what do you do if you don't have the time or market knowledge? Discover how many business investors have found a way to generate cash flow from real estate investing. Their secret? They partner with proven private real estate investment funds. Four Peaks Capital Partners have created a system that allows accredited investors the opportunity to invest in undervalued assets to generate passive income and capital gains. Invest with the cash flow experts and sit back while Four Peaks does all the work. Call Four Peaks Capital Partners at 877-5-INCOME. That's 877-5-INCOME or go to privateincomeinvesting.com. An offer to buy or sell securities is only made by a private placement memorandum. Prospective investors must read the PPM in its entirety before making an investment decision. Seth, welcome to the show. Hey, MC, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Can you please share a little bit about your background and journey with my listeners? Yes, absolutely. Um, so, you know, I first started learning about real estate investing back in about 2005 when I was in college and that was the first time I read the infamous book that so many people know about, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and the whole concept of real estate first entered my radar. And, uh, you know, the, the thing about that book, I'm not, have you read that book? Are you familiar Abs- with it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it, the great thing about that book is like it kind of opens your mind to a lot of different possibilities. And it was the first time I ever really started thinking about wealth creation and money in a way that actually made sense. Uh, but he doesn't tell you any specifics on like how to do it necessarily. So for me, I was just thinking, okay, well, let's go out and find real estate to buy. Let's find a rental property or a house to flip. And, you know, at the time, 2005, I was looking at my local market in Grand Rapids and I'm telling you, like I just spent an untold number of hours trying to find any deal where the numbers made sense and it just didn't exist. Like I couldn't find anything out there. And it was really, really frustrating to me because I was like, man, like how do people do this? How do people make money from real estate? Because I, I can't find anything where the, where the numbers kind of work together. And um, basically, you know, because of my ignorance, I had no idea like how to find off market properties, how to negotiate, how to get, you know, great deals on stuff. Um, and so I just ended up wasting a lot of time. But a couple of years later, you know, I graduated college. I started getting into the workforce. I had more time to really try to figure out some creative ways to find deals. And um, it was at about that time when I, I discovered a couple different things. First was the idea of land investing and also the idea of sending direct mail to people who had delinquent taxes. And uh, with these two things coupled together, uh, I was able to find basically like an unlimited number of people who were willing to sell their land and not just sell it, but sell it for like dirt cheap, like ridiculously cheap. We're talking like the first deal I ever bought was a half acre parcel of land for $331. 
And I was able to buy that thing and turn around and resell it a couple of weeks later for $1,900. Um, and the thing that really worked for me, especially at that point in my life, was that first of all, you know, as you can tell that the dollar amounts were small. Like I didn't need to go into debt to buy this stuff. I could literally just use my cash on hand and it was land. So there was really like very, very, you know, few complications and gotchas that could come up and get me. And uh, it was just really straightforward and pretty easy to get it done. And, um, you know, my, my, my wife is very, very uh, frugal and uh, you know, against the idea of risk and debt. And she was able to get on board with the idea of this as well because of the fact that it did not involve very much risk. Um, so really, that's what I've been doing for the past like 10 plus years now is buying and selling land. And um, it's really just been a great fit for me and, and for what, I'm, what I need to do uh, in the real estate business. So that's kind of my primary background. I also have some rental properties um, I've tinkered around a little bit with real estate crowdfunding, not in a big way, but that's kind of like a newer thing I'm getting into. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Great. Uh, now Seth, what's your, uh, philosophy, um, and how do you approach your investing in it? And is there a, a checklist that you draw from when you look at investments? Yeah, well, my, I think my philosophy, part of it has to do with, uh, my personality. I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of this, but I'm actually like a fairly fearful person. Like I'm just, I worry a lot about things going wrong. Like where, where is, where is the hole in the, in the deal? How can this go sideways for me? So I'm always looking for ways to minimize risk and just like not overextend myself. And, you know, with something like land investing where I'm able to buy properties for cash and never go into debt. Uh, that works really well for me. Just the fact that I don't have to stick my neck out and have a lot of uncertainty in the deal. Um, so for me, the philosophy is trying to keep debt, not non-existent necessarily. I think there's times when it makes a lot of sense and is frankly essential to like, you know, leverage yourself and, and, and get ahead. But you don't have to do that. It's not the only way to make it work. And uh, there are ways to generate pretty, you know, quick uh, influxes of cash without going into debt and doing it that way. So I really like things that are, are low risk where kind of like how Gordon Gecko said on the movie Wall Street, he said, uh, what was it? Like, I don't throw darts at a board. I bet on sure things. So like, I like to invest in things where, I mean, there's pretty much no way for the cards to fall except in my favor on the back end. So, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's the one thing that I've seen from successful investors too, is protecting the downside. You know, a lot of folks uh, would quote <laughs> Warren Buffett at, at cocktail parties about the rule number one, don't lose any money. Rule number two, don't lose any money, right? But yeah. then they find themselves in vehicles where they have zero control over and they cannot protect them, their downside. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, let's dive into land investing a little bit for some of my listeners that are not familiar with it. Um, can you explain a little bit about land investing and then take us, give us a little sneak peek into your system because uh, that's one thing that, you, uh, that you've done really well and successfully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, I mean, land is, it's kind of like anything else. Um, like the way I, I sort of look at it is, similar to like if you were to buy and sell a used car or a piece of jewelry or anything of value, the whole idea is acquiring that thing of value for very, very, very little, like a small fraction of its actual fair market value. Because when you're able to acquire something and pay almost nothing for it on the front end, it just really protects you on the back end when you decide to sell. It gives you a massive profit margin and even if you end up being wrong in your due diligence process, like say, if you, if you overlooked a particular issue with the property, say it, maybe it's not worth as much as you thought it was, or there's something about it that's going to make it harder to sell, even then, uh, you're still okay because you, know, you have very, very little invested in the property. And even if you have to have to lower your price again and again and again, you still can make a profit on that. Um, and so that's, that's kind of how land works. Uh, the idea is to find highly motivated sellers that happen to own land and make them really, really low offers. And, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of times when you make offers to these people, you know, 
don't get me wrong, a lot of them say no and are not interested, but that's okay. Uh, really, th this is a numbers game. It's all about finding a high quantity of the right kind of people and making the right kind of offers. And eventually, you will get yeses. And you know, pretty much every time you, you do get a yes, if you're you know managing the process right, it's going to be a grand slam deal because you're working with the right people, the right kinds of properties, and, and you're making the right offers to them. Um, and for me, the way that I typically find these deals is through direct mail. And it's all about getting a specific list of property owners that happens to own land or happens to be delinquent on their taxes. And, and there's a number of different ways to get these kind of lists. But once you have them, you can send out a piece of mail asking them to uh, call you back or send you an email, or you can even send them like a blind offer, like without even looking at the property, just based on the size of it and the market values in that area, say, this is my offer, take it or leave it. And really, I think all these ways can work. There's different pros and cons to what type of mail you send out. But uh, pretty much no matter how you slice it, this is how we find deals at, at, just at a massive scale through direct mail. And uh, I've also got a buying website where I get a lot of free submissions that way too, where people are basically you know, doing a Google search, trying to figure out how to sell their land fast. And then they find my website and submit their property information and uh, I get a lot of free leads that way as well, which is nice because I don't have to spend money on direct mail that way. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Now, some of the, uh, the places that you're mailing, is there a database that you get access to? Is there, um, is there a service that you pay for? What, um, what exists? How do you, what criteria are you looking for and how do you find those folks to mail directly to? Yeah. Well, yeah, there, there are several different uh, data services out there where you can get these kinds of lists and they, they all really make it quite easy to sort the list based on the criteria that you want. Uh, but for example, the, the service that I'm currently using is called Agent Pro 24-7 and I've used it for a number of years. I don't think it's necessarily like, like the best across the board, but for the price, it's a pretty good value what they give you. Um, and basically, you can say, you know, all the properties in this county or this city or, th or this zip code that are zoned specifically as you know, single family residential. They're currently just vacant land, so there's nothing on the property. And I want the sizes to be between X number of acres and X number of acres. And I want the market values to be in this approximate range. And uh, those are kind of like the key things that you want to specify in your list. And then of course, when you get the list, you, you can uh, remove duplicate owners. If anything just clearly does not fall within the criteria that you want, you can take those out as well. And uh, really just take that list and then upload that and your mail copy to a service like click to mail or letterprinting.net or Letterstream. There's a number of other of those services out there as well. And uh, send the mail out and you're good to go. Just kind of wait for the responses to come in. And this is all over the country or are there specific markets that you look at? Yeah, I, I've done it all over the country. Um, over the past uh, year, I've been working both in my home state and in New Mexico. Um, so that's those are kind of places I've been planted recently. But you know, I've worked in areas like Florida and California, and uh, let's see, Wisconsin, Indiana, number of different states out there. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, as part of systematizing it, if it's out of state and so forth, what? Um, what is the negotiation like? Is it done virtually? Is it on the phone? Uh, it's, uh, it, do you have a system set up for that to, to kind of automate um, that part of the transaction? Yeah, you know, it's uh, my whole philosophy uh, or just the whole approach that I take with the land investing business. There actually is not a lot of negotiation that goes on. I mean, there's some if it's like a great property and if we're like almost hitting the mark, then, you know, we can do some back and forth. But for the most part, the, the people that are selling to me are people that just frankly don't care about their property. Like they bought it years ago. It's just not on their radar anymore. They just don't care. Or maybe they inherited it from somebody else. Like it was never really theirs in the first place that so they don't have this big attachment to it. And I mean, no matter how you slice it, my offer to them is going to be ridiculous. Like it's crazy how low it is. So like if they have any, you know, like if they care on any level about getting market value, they're probably not going to work with me or even respond to me in the first place. 
So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like just throwing a bunch of junk at the wall and seeing what sticks, honestly, is what it boils down to. Um, I know there's, there's definitely other investing strategies where there's a lot more negotiation going on, but that's not really how this particular approach works, which is actually kind of nice because I've never really considered myself to be a great salesman or anything like that. Like I just, I'm pretty straightforward. Like this is what it is. So take it or leave it. And uh, that, that works pretty well with that mentality. You're listening to Seth Williams on the Cashflow Ninja podcast. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. Blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies will not only disrupt money, but every industry on the planet. These new innovations and technologies will affect every area of your life in the future. The cryptocurrency course teaches you everything that you need to know about getting started and profiting with cryptocurrencies and includes expert training from the top crypto experts in the world. You'll learn how to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies, how to safely store your crypto, how to become a sound investor, even if you're just a beginner, and how to apply blockchain technology to your business. You can watch a free crypto masterclass and grab the crypto course at cashflowninja.com forward slash crypto course. You're listening to Seth Williams on the Cashflow Ninja podcast, and I'm back to our interview. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And so, uh, Seth, and you and I did discussed about two about passive income, and I know that you invest in other properties. So, this is part of your business that you're automating, and then you're also investing in other ventures and have other uh, uh, properties for passive income. Yep, that's right. So when did you when did that switch kind of happen? Uh, talk us a little bit through uh, uh, some some of that process of turning active income, which land flipping is still part of active income, and then transferring that into passive income. Yeah, you know, for me it was always like sort of a, like a vague aspiration in the back of my mind. Like I obviously want more passive income, but it wasn't until just recently that I got like like very serious about you know, clearly defining what is passive income exactly? Like what, what am I going to be willing to pursue? What kinds of income is going to come in regardless of whether or not I'm doing anything? Um, and I actually found like some of the things that I thought were passive actually aren't all that passive. <laughs> like for, uh, you know, since I think about 2011, um, you know, as I'm able to find deals and as I have excess cash for my business, I'll go out and, and buy a rental property or a duplex. And, you know, I obviously have a, uh, well, maybe not obviously, but I happen to have a property manager in place who handles all of that. So I probably spend like a maximum of like two minutes a month looking at that and just seeing how much money it made and, you know, evaluating whether any improvements need to be made and that kind of thing. So I think that's definitely part of it. Um, the problem though with rental properties though, is that like, I don't want to call it the most stable or predictable source of income. I mean, there's always, you know, something comes out of left field like, oh, you need a new roof. So that's going to cost you 6,000 bucks or, oh, can I get a new paint job or a new furnace? And I just, I don't like that. Like, I want to just know what the income is going to be and not wonder if something's going to sabotage my income for the year. <laughs> um, so I think like, as I, as I move forward, I kind of want to steer a little bit away from the rental properties and go into stuff that, uh, you know, I think, I think, you know, any kind of improved property is always going to have maintenance issues, but some things are more predictable than others. Like for example, and I'm actually just kind of in the learning process of this myself, I can't claim to be an expert, but things like a self storage facility, you know, there's obviously maintenance issues, new roofs, new doors, you know, new pavement, things like that. Um, but it's a lot less and there's not people calling you at three in the morning and um, you know, there's not like faucets you got to replace. It's, it's just like a simpler, more predictable than a rental property would be. And things like farmland, I actually just bought my first uh, 
piece of farmland this past month. Uh, and I, I want to do a lot more of that just because, I mean, all of the, um, you know, instability and challenges to farming is mostly dealt with by the farmer, not the landlord, which is what I want to be. Like I want to own the farmland that the farmers pay lease payments for. So I kind of want to just go more down that path because it's just more stable and predictable. And, um, you know, I don't think anything is guaranteed in life, but uh, I think that's, you know, more of a guarantee than something like a residential rental property. Gotcha. Gotcha. What is your view right now on the market that you operate in this, the land investing? What, what's that market like? And then also speak a little bit towards the real estate market. What are some of your views um, in general? I know it's, <laughs> it's hard to paint uh, the entire real estate market with one paintbrush, but uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing out there? Yeah, well, in the land, in land business specifically, I mean, it's always like one of the really nice inherent things about it is that it's always been uh, pretty low competition. I used to say no competition at all because I literally never encountered another competitor on any property I was pursuing. I think that's changed a little bit, a little bit over the past few years. I have encountered competitors here and there, still not on a, a large scale at all, but it is out there. People are starting to butt heads a little bit. Um, and by and large, like I'm still able to get deals. It's not like inhibiting my ability to find opportunities, but it's just, I guess, sort of like annoying more than anything, just knowing that, oh, darn, I'm not the only person now in the world who's going after these properties. Um, and I think that's more prevalent in certain pockets of the country than in others. Um, there tends to be a lot more activity in like the Southwest US for some reason, not so much in the Midwest. So depending on, on where I choose to work, I may or may not encounter anybody else out there. Um, and, you know, obviously compared to like the market for wholesaling houses or that kind of thing. I mean, that's nuts. Like there is tons of competition pretty much everywhere. Um, so in contrast, land is still very, 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 very low competition, but it's sort of changing a little bit. Um, as for like the real estate market in general, you know, I was actually reading a pretty interesting article uh, this past year put out by Harvard and it was it's pretty interesting. I was talking about like the cycle of economic recessions and how real estate tends to drive that. Um, and it, it sort of gave the, uh, the illustration of, you know, when you have a developer who is developing a property, say they're going to build like a, you know, 500 unit uh, apartment building, which would be huge. But, you know, if, if somebody is building a very large real estate development, it typically takes like, 18 to 24 months from start to finish to actually complete that whole process and bring those properties to market. And, you know, one of the reasons that recessions happen, especially in real estate, is that, you know, all of a sudden, like, like, you know, you sort of look at the environment we're seeing today where there's, at least in my market, there's a huge demand for housing and not enough houses, not enough builders to go around and meet that demand. So that kind of drives prices up. So in the process, you know, builders and developer, developers are scrambling to build more units, but then eventually like they sort of catch up and start to meet the demand and the demand starts to die down a little bit, but these developers are still right in the middle of building hundreds and hundreds of more units and they're not going to be done for another 12 to 18 to 24 months. Um, and that's sort of where the recession comes from because the demand is already met, but there's still tons of new units coming to market and eventually it starts to become saturated and there's not enough demand to consume that supply. And then all of a sudden prices crash because there's tons of units and not enough buyers to go around. So I think we're sort of like, you know, I, I obviously can't predict when that's going to happen, but I think that's definitely how it's going to happen. And I, I know like in my area, there is a ton of, of building going on. And uh, I just, I can kind of see the writing on the wall. Like I just sort of know that's going to happen at some point. And uh, I think if you trace back all the recessions for the past hundred years, it's happened on average every 18 years approximately is like when these big recessions happen. And uh, you know, back when I was reading this article, I was trying to calculate based on that assumption when the next recession would hit. And I think it was going to be sometime around like 2024 or something like that. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, go on a record saying that's when it's going to happen, but 
you know, I, I think we have some time before things start to slow down, but, you know, I think we're sort of getting closer and closer rapidly to when that's going to happen. And if anything, it might happen sooner than that, just because there's a lot of new things happening in the world that were never happening in the past, like a lot of automation and, you know, jobs that are being replaced by machines and things like that. So it's kind of uncharted, uh, uncharted territory that we're in right now. Yeah, absolutely. Now, very, very interesting take. Uh, Seth, now, one of the things that um, I've observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and uh, learning new skill sets. What are you currently studying? What new skill sets are you currently learning? Yeah. Well, I actually uh, just started listening to an audio book uh, this past week. Uh, it's called, I think it's called 8020 Sales and Marketing by a guy named Perry Marshall. And uh, it's been pretty fascinating so far. I'm only about a quarter of the way through it, but um, it's based on this whole concept of, you know, the, the, I'm sure you're familiar with the 80-20 rule. And particularly when it comes to your marketing efforts, I mean, usually, you know, 20% uh, or even less, or I'm sorry, uh, 80% uh, of the results that you get in your business come from 20% or less of your actual marketing efforts. So the idea is to, figure out, you know, what that 20% is and focus on that instead of just trying to blanket everything. Um, and even going a step further, like what is the top 20% of the top 20%? Like what is, you know, the, the top 4% of everything you do and try to hit that hard so that really you can get like 64% of the results from 4% of your efforts. Um, so I don't know, just kind of fascinating. And I think it's something that applies to a lot of life, not just business stuff, but that's kind of the context he uses to explain it in the book. Absolutely. Perry is a previous guest on the show. So he oh, had really? mentioned that. Awesome. Yeah. So I would highly recommend that book too, for folks to check out. Cool. Uh, very, very intriguing and gives you, you know, everybody's heard of that principle, Pareto's law, but how he breaks it down, yeah. and the different insight he gives uh, on it to use it in your sales, in your marketing, in your business is, is quite uh, fascinating. So, yeah. uh, no, I would highly recommend that. So thank you for, for, for sharing that. Yeah. So, Seth, now core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and the world better than we found it mm-hmm. by passing down a mindset, values, and principles to future generations, not just money. Um, so if you can pass on money to future generations and are only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I would say uh, there's actually I have this massive collection of quotes that I have saved over the years. Every time I hear some, you know, brilliant, profound insight from anybody, whether it's on a podcast or a book, I try to just jot it down so I don't forget it. And uh, I've actually got uh, three here to share with you that I think all of them will be relevant to your listeners and, and to you, really. Um, <laughs> first one here is from. Abraham Lincoln. And his quote is, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I will spend the first hour sharpening the ax. So in other words, like work smarter, not harder. <laughs> and I think this applies a lot in business and in real estate, just in terms of like education, like before you just go out there and go crazy spending money and just buying stuff up or doing whatever you're going to do, like get educated, like be smart about what you're doing. Cause like you could really expend a lot of unnecessary effort if you don't think it through and just be careful with uh, what you're doing. So, um, and another one here is uh, from the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible, Ecclesiastes seven verse five, it says better to be criticized by a wise person than to be praised by a fool. And this is something that uh, I don't know. I, I try to keep this in mind in my daily life because, you know, every, I don't know, every day or so somebody will, you know, tweet at me or send me an email saying like, thanks so much, Seth, for this blog post you wrote or this video you made. And, um, you know, I, I always appreciate getting that kind of positive feedback, but at the same time, when people are not friendly, like when people come out and say like, Hey, I think you're wrong about this, or I think you did a horrible job of this, or this is not a good representation I don't get that a lot, but like when I do, like I never 
want to run from that or, you know, put that kind of thing down or silence it. Like, I want to know, like, I really want to know when people disagree with me because like, that's usually where life's biggest lessons come from is when people are not just being all rosy and, and friendly to me is when they're really trying to just, you know, even if they're trying to be like mean and malicious about it, there's usually some kind of lesson somewhere in there that I need to pay attention to. So that's another important thing I try to keep in mind. And uh, lastly here, another quote from uh, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, the author we were talking about just earlier. Uh, and this is something that I've actually been experimenting with a lot this past year, but he says, an intelligent person hires people who are more intelligent than he is, uh, which basically goes to show like, if you're the smartest person in your business, then that's a problem. <laughs> like you need to have people who are brilliant working for you. And, you know, don't be afraid of not being like the ultimate genius in everything that you do, because I think everybody around you knows something that you don't. And there's a lot you have to gain by acknowledging that and really using it to build your business and your following and uh, influencing the world. So that's what I got. No, those are, those are great. And it's so true with the, the eight team uh, player hires, right? Because a lot of folks bring on team players and um, they don't really take into consideration uh, the three things of price, cost, and value mm -hmm. determining to make a decision. So a lot of folks would hire someone and, and pay less, <laughs> but yeah. the true cost and the, val the overall value is much less than paying a higher price. Yeah. And the cost over time is less because that person is going to bring in uh, the, a ton of value mm -hmm. over and above what you're what you're paying them uh so that ticket price of, uh, eventually is less in, the, in, in overall cost than the lower ticket price and produces more value uh to your company and then to your clients and your and the marketplace yeah absolutely so uh seth where, where can uh, my listeners uh, follow you where can they learn more about your blog and all of the fantastic articles uh podcast interviews and resources that you share on there yeah absolutely um well, kind of like my main home base on the internet is is my blog at uh, retipster.com. So that's R-E for real estate, tipster.com. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on social media all over the place. If you want to search for me wherever you're on, you'll probably find me somewhere. Um, I've got, got a YouTube channel that I put a lot of work in it as well. Uh, and you can find that retipster.com forward slash YouTube. We'll bring you to the, the YouTube channel as well. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, I just started uh, a podcast earlier this year too, which I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. I'm not nearly as good as you are at this, but uh, if you want to search I iTunes for RE Tipster, you'll probably find my podcast there as well. So feel free to check that out. Great. Seth, well, this has been a pleasure connecting, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on the show and Absolutely. sharing your journey uh, and uh, providing so much value for my listeners. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again for having me on. It was great to talk to you. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the United States. Our simple proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Learn how to find the best deals by downloading your free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing at noradarealestate.com. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com. Thank you for joining me again on the Cashflow Ninja. Thank you for all your support. You rock. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at cashflowninja.com or text Cashflow Ninja to 44. Two, two, two. I'm also posting daily videos on Facebook and YouTube and will live stream weekly starting May 2018. To make sure you don't miss any of the live streams, please like and subscribe to my Facebook and YouTube platforms. I'm also dropping content on Instagram daily. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to get in on the action. I want to thank you for spending your most precious resource with me today, your time. That's our show for today. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms.
This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.